We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two co-hosts and two best friends. Michael Plant and Mike Bonney. What's going on, dudes? Hey. What's up? Y'all ready to talk some football tonight? You betcha. Oh, I've been waiting all day. Let's jump right into last night's game, guys. The Bears with the shocker of the night after being underdogs at home beat the Bucks 20 to 19, and the Bears improved to four and one on this season for the first time since 2012. The Bears would go on to finish that season 10-6, and six, finishing third in the NFC North and failing to qualify for the postseason that year. It is a little... The Bears de- yeah, right. The Bears' defense did a great job bringing pressure on Brady throughout the game, pressuring him on 43.2% of his dropbacks. Khalil Mack looked like the stud that he- the Bears finally needed him to be. Yeah, he did. Having six pressures and two sacks on 34 rushes. Robert Quinn also... Paid him big money. Had five pressures on 28 rushes as well. That was the highest rate in the game on Tom Brady since 2017. Robert Quinn really showed me up. I thought he'd be a bad pickup. <laughs> like, what, what do I know, I guess? Their defense was just on fire last night. Yeah. Like, let's jump it. Let's jump into the Bucks offense, though. Brady had a pretty decent game, kind of pedestrian, though. He was 25 of 41 for 253 that's, and a touchdown. What do you guys that's think? That's the best game you're going to hope for when you're playing the Bears defense at home especially with the way that they were pressuring him last night and the way his offensive line Yeah, he was getting pressured all night. It was insane. I'm surprised he didn't fumble it or maybe even throw a pick just because of the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Jumping to their running back, Ronald Jones. Guys, he looks really good. Like, people say that he – some people say that he's not good at football, but to me, he – he looks like he knows. Who's what been doing saying he's not run. good at football? It's just weird. I just heard yeah. it all. Yeah, I heard it all off season that he's got stone hands, all that. Kind Unfortunately, of stuff, you know? this but, just means that it's going to be even more of a confused backfield when Fournette comes back. Because when Fournette was healthy, he ran good, and then Ronald Jones is running well, so it's just going to be even more confusing. I, I like. personally think Ronald Jones should be the guy. I don't, Michael Play. What do you think? <sighs> I think Ronald Jones probably deserves it. He's been productive with the. Right? I feel like Fournette's probably the bigger playability guy, though. I think they're going to – I mean, I think Tom's going to have some input on it. I think they're going to kind of use it like the Patriots used to use it. You know, Fournette, For once sure. they get inside of that 20, they might use him a little bit more often. And then Ronald Jones, you know, from 20 to 20, they're going to use him more often than Fournette. But obviously, they're going to yeah. use Vaughn, too. Yeah, he looked pretty good. Until he got smacked, Kyle Fuller ripped his soul from his <laughs> body with that hit. Uh, that was a good <laughs> welcome to the league, rookie hit. <laughs> but uh, the going in the box receiving core was all bagged up too. Mike Evans was nursing an uh, ankle injury, but he ended up being okay for you if you started him. He had five catches on nine targets for 41 yards, and shocker, he caught another short touchdown. Weird. <laughs> That's just what he does. But the surprise was who nobody probably started unless uh, just a DFS dart throw or something was Tyler Johnson had four catches on six targets he, for 61 yards. He looked, Made a couple big yeah, plays. Yeah, he looked good. Yes, he did. Uh, the real disappointment was who people – some people probably started, guys, was Scotty Miller who po- posted a goose egg. Yes. Yeah, he must have been still feeling his injury to not be 100%. It's just w- weird that he didn't get – anything i think i yeah. think he had eddie jackson on him a lot of the night and it's hard to get open with eddie jackson on you sure sure let's uh jump into the bears though nick Foles, big dick nick guys 30 of 42 243 yards one touchdown and an interception the interception was eh, kind of on him kind of on Allen robinson but he, uh Foles looked bad at times guys but then there was times when he got into rhythm and looked good is do you think he's streamable moving no. forward or not? Nah? Yeah, I'd have to agree with Ike. I don't. I don't think he is. Okay, Fair that enough. was a hard matchup, just, but yeah. Just as long as he keeps winning games, sure. Bears, yeah. That's all I care about, and keeping uh, 
guys like David Montgomery and Allen Robinson fantasy relevant. Uh, Montgomery struggled a little bit on the ground, 10 rushes, 29 yards. He did get it in the end zone, but the, the thing that probably surprises a lot of people, even though I kind of preach it a little bit, that he can do it. He just hasn't had the opportunity, guys. He had seven catches on eight targets. For only 30 yards. But seven I, catches I know, if you're in PPR, that's targets. awesome. That's seven but if, straight, that's but seven if you're points, not in PPR, man, like he is still inefficient, and that touchdown saves him big time, or it could have been very bad. That's LaPlante, how are you feeling that's a on solid Monty? Floor. You're not going to get a high ceiling a lot of the times, but you're going to get a very solid RB2 floor. I agree. I agree with LaPlante there. Uh, by Allen Robinson, 10 receptions on 16 targets, Woo. guys, for, ni- for 90 yards. He's now fourth in the league in targets. I know it's he's a game ahead of everybody, but still. He's awesome. And he I, he even said in the post-game interview he left some plays. Yeah, he does field. make some weird mistakes. I feel like the, the Nick Foles interception was partly on him, like – it almost like he batted yeah. it up. It was kind of odd. He's had three plays where he's had a chance to make plays on the ball. This and they've season, been picked. And unfortunately. Yeah, been it's picked. been yeah. weird. Super weird. And it's coming from a guy who's battling. For, he really wants to be paid big time, you know, too. Mm-hmm. And it, it would just be nice for him to make those plays for the Bears and his yep. fantasy value. But uh, then the next guy, Jimmy Graham, he's staying fantasy relevant. Three receptions on five targets for 33 yards, but he got in the end zone on a sick one-handed catch. Yeah, that was pretty nice. It was a flashback to his New Orleans days. Definitely. I thought it was dropped at first, and then uh, the next thing you know, it was touched. I was like, wait, what? Yep. What do you guys uh, – let's jump into some game previews for uh, this weekend. Hell yeah. I'm done. All right, let's start with Carolina at the Falcons. Teddy Bridgewater, his matchup doesn't get much better than this, guys. What do you think? What did you say? The Falcons average like 32 points to QBs for fantasy? <laughs> yes, they lead the league through four weeks. They've allowed 32.5 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks, which is obviously Wild. first in the league. I think he's worth a start. And the next close. <laughs> The next closest was 27 points per game, and that's the Seahawks. That's just an insane number. If you wanted to start Teddy, this would be the week to do it. That's for sure. Yeah, this is the best week for uh, him and maybe some other one of his wide receivers. Or if you're doing the out. whole quarterback streaming thing, you could pretty much target <laughs> yeah, Falcons he, every he, week. He's got he's got to be the best quarterback streaming option this week. It's not Joe Burrow. Say, but yes. It's not Joe Burrow against the Ravens, I'll tell you that. Nope. Yep. Um, now let's jump into the running backs for him. Mike Davis, guys, he's getting a ton of volume with McCaffrey being out. He has 23 targets over the last three weeks. He's obviously board. Is he a borderline running back one with McCaffrey out? I think just in this offense, whoever's the running back's going to be borderline to mid running back one numbers. Especially this week. I oh, think, yeah. Right? I guess For the sure. Falcons, their defense just sucks. <laughs> yeah, the Falcons just, you know, ooze fantasy points to running backs. Hell, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, to wide receivers, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, guys. Ike, I know you've been a DJ Moore supporter, so I want to kick this to you. Panic button, 1 to 10. Where are you at on him? Well, for this week, I, the panic's at like a zero because he's playing the worst defense in the league. But going forward, I, I I still have it pretty low because he's still getting the targets, which he's top 12 in the league. In. And unfortunately, he just keeps getting drops, which I feel like he'll figure that out at some point. You're not worried about Robbie Anderson at all? He's got two more no, targets. No, he, he is feet. having an ultra-efficient start to the year. If you really think he can keep putting this up, then – Good for you. Go pick him up. Go Let trade for LaPlante. him. Then, <laughs> then he's going to be wire receiver one, go, though. LaPlante, go ahead and argue your Robbie Anderson point against DJ Moore if you want. You two go ahead and for a minute. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I mean, he's getting two more targets than him on the season. And D, like you like you said, he has had a couple of drops, DJ Moore. His catch rate's uh, 56.2%. And, and That's not no, great. 
And then Robbie Anderson's is 82.4. So you're not wrong. He's being you really think he could yeah, keep I, catching that much though. I mean, he's just being used differently in this. Oh yeah, for he, sure. But I, he's, he's just having a good start to the year. I mean, but still, I think it's also accompanied by DJ Moore. you know, getting the number one cornerback coverage all, all, all the time, but he's getting the Falcons this week. So this is the best week for him. To for sure. Out. Yeah. All right, guys. The plant you get T Y Hilton. Mike, you get uh, AJ Green. LaPlante, I'll let you go first. 30 seconds and then 30 first seconds. First off, I'm going to start go off ahead, at this point. They're both droppable. But <laughs> but <laughs> AJ Green, uh, he's only got a catch rate of 42.4% compared to TUI's 59.1%. And he's got Phillip Rivers throwing him the ball over his head half the time. Joe, Joe Burrow is throwing it right at AJ Green, and he's just dropping it. All right, T.Y. Hilton has 162 yards on the year, while A.J. Green only has 119. I mean, go ahead. Can I go yet? <laughs> All right, so he has ran more routes than T.Y. Hilton in three of the four games so far. He has 10 more targets. A.J. Green's actually top 12 in targets. So, I mean, he's still getting the volume, so I don't think he's droppable at all. He just needs to bring his catch rate up. He has more, 10 more targets, like I said. His catch rate is the only thing that's lower, actually. So, I mean, you can bring that up. The only reason why he has that many more targets, though, is because Bengals are always down, so they got to throw it. The Colts have been up in most cases and been running the ball, and he still – but T.Y. Hillen's still not running routes. Like in week three, he only ran But yet 15, has more week yards two, on only the season 24. than A.J. Green Oof. with one less reception. That's just because A.J. Green can't catch okay. right now. That's why I started right, off he will. both of them are at this That's point kind of dropping. Guys, I've sided with the side no. that they're – Don't they're drop A.J. Droppable. Green. I'm sorry, they're both droppable. No, don't drop A.J. Green. Come on. I'm dropping A.J. Green because of T. Higgins' explosion, guys. It's here. See, at least you know, explosion, T.Y. Huh? isn't battling with people because of the injuries of Paris Campbell. He... <sighs> Don't listen to those two. Don't drop wow. them just yet. <laughs> wow. Uh, Ron just tra- you re- Ron who just is out there instead that you really got to pick up Freeman instead? And Gary. That's stupid. Do you guys think... T. Higgins no. is startable this week or no? This is a tough matchup. He's going to be matchup. <laughs> no, not against Baltimore. Yeah. And it's also bad news for Tyler Boyd this week because apparently I kept I keep hearing that Marlon Humphrey covers the slot now. So Ooh. that's going to be the matchup. Uh-oh. So Tyler Boyd, I, um, if you have a decent matchup as one of your bench receivers, I just I would think go he's going to have so much can. volume. He'll be able to make something happen. Drew Sample, guys, not a fan. Nope. You guys okay with him or no? Okay. Nope. Lamar Jackson, guys, he should feast this week. He might be out of the game by the third quarter because they're kicking their ass so bad, but before then, I think he should smash. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he killed his defense last year. and He's didn't do much to startable. Stop him. <laughs> Who's going to kill it out of the backfield? Ingram, Dobbins, or Edwards this week? Mm, none of them. I would not be comfortable starting Ingram, say JK but Dobbins if you have to start Ingram. Mm. And then the wide receiver room, Marquise Brown, Miles Boyk, and Willie Sneed. I, I have Marquise Brown in a few different spots, guys, and he's, he's doing okay, but he hasn't had that explosion. I think that explosion could come this week. Do you guys, do you guys agree? You keep saying that every and week, it's gonna work. I, but I think I legit happen. think this is. The I mean, week. can I just I do a quick little thing? Still, the do it. what's the difference between him and DJ Moore? Marquise Brown. Who? There's not a whole lot. Well, Marquise Brown is more of yeah. a big play guy than DJ Moore. But that's where DJ was supposed to excel, though, his yards after catch and stuff, and that's why he's kind of struggling a little bit too this year, I feel, right? And he's supposed to be the target beast, and, I mean, he's still getting targets, but not as much as he's used uh, to. Who, 
who would you guys rather have going forward, Marquise Brown or DJ Moore? I think I would still side DJ. Moore. If we're going by this week, I go DJ Moore because he's got a way better matchup. Daddy, what can I tell? Can he I said rest of the season, also? Michael Plant. Yeah. Uh, rest of the season, probably DJ Moore, just because sure. he's got more volume in it. How about that? We all agree. Mark Andrews, guys. He keeps doing his thing. He'll probably catch a touchdown or two this week. Top five tight end yes, for sure. Yes, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Jump into the next games. Try and speed this up a little bit. Jacksonville Jaguars at the winless Houston Texans. Gardner Minshew. This guy's going to be <laughs> just not no, fun to watch. I feel, I feel like, like it's kind of going to be a poo game. Uh, this one might be a little low scoring, I feel, too. Least airtime I read. Um, I know we already said Teddy's probably the best streamable option. Is Gardner a close second or no? I'd be taking him over Joe Burrow. Uh, if DJ Chark's playing, I'd play Minshew. He's just better yeah. on the field. DJ. Yeah, I'm definitely okay starting Minshew. J- yeah. Uh, running backs, James Robinson, Chris Thompson. Pretty much just James Robinson. He, uh, Chris Thompson's probably droppable. Yeah. yeah, I agree there. James Robinson, he's an every week start. I think. He, at least your he's your RB two. At least a, fe- a flex play. Yeah, if he's your flex, you're looking yes, good. It, probably one of the best he, uh, waiver wire ads on the season, besides him or yep. Mike Davis. But Robinson has a better uh, a better. Yeah, he's that waiver wire forward, pickup of the year for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. And that wide receivers, they all got great matchups this week against this porous Houston defense. DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, Chris Connolly. LaVisca's hurt, actually. Is he not playing? I'm looking it up right now. DJ Chark, guys, finally got the volume. LaPlan, how many targets did Who he Who are we talking about? Chark? Week? Was it 11? DJ Chark, yeah. Do, 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 do. DJ Chark. He's, uh... Nine targets last week. DJ Chark. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. He's only, right? he's only, he's got sixteen targets on the His... year, fifteen catches. That's pretty fucking efficient. DJ Chark. That's unreal. Who? DJ Chark. He's oh, good, damn. guys. He's a good player. Shay Nott will be playing. He hurt his hamstring, but he did not carry an okay. injury designation. And Lavisca is borderline startable. Definitely, he's good enough to be good enough matchup to throw in a uh, tournament for DFS. They seem to love him yeah, in that offense. Did. He does yeah, everything. Like Swiss Army Knife, man. I even heard they used him at tight he's, end last year. He's the better version of Cordero. Cool. That's awesome. I won't go that far just yet. Uh, Tyler Eifert. Cordero's proven. Chanel probably played a little bit of tight end because Tyler Eifert's just eh. So <laughs> yeah. So. Just, eh. I wouldn't, you wouldn't, you no. don't need to start him. With the firing of B.O.B., guys, is, uh, you think the Texans are going to be like, fuck it, we're going to smash this game. You think Deshaun Watson's going to go off? I thought he would last week, but he just disappointed me again, so I don't really, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not necessarily fully trustworthy of him, but if he's one of your only quarterbacks, you yeah, obviously got to start him. This is a good matchup. Especially one. against the Jaguars. Miles Jack's yeah. questionable I'm... to play. I think their rookie, C.J. Henderson's out. Not always. But he seems it's to just... always disappoint. I don't know. It's just this Deshaun. year without DeAndre. Yeah. He... Deshaun looks like he's... Oh, yeah. He... Uh, yeah, it has obviously something to do with DeAndre being gone, but he's regressed, and I think that's one of the main reasons why... O'Brien was fired because Deshaun's kind of looked poopy. Bad play call. Yes, he's had a tough schedule. Yeah. Besides last week, but he, yeah, you're obviously starting. You're starting David Johnson too, probably. I was going to ask you. you Agreed. No, I don't don't see it, but if they're down, Duke Johnson might see some work because he's healthy now. Yeah, he'll get a little bit. Not, Not too much, though. I went started. And Johnson still looked good. Or sorry, David Johnson, Johnson. still looked good, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know who's looked good, guys, but he's out on the field is Will Fuller. He's definitely the wide receiver one in this uh, offense. Yeah, until otherwise, yeah. until Brandon Cooks can deliver. 
He looks like he, I don't no, think he will. He, he doesn't really look like he's got a spot in this offense. I think Randall Cobb's probably Laplante. Look at the targets between Randall Cobb and Brady Cooks through four games. Um, and then let's go to Jordan Akins. I know he's battling a concussion. Has there been any news if he's going to play or not? Because David Fells did hey. make my tight end streaming article this week. If Akins does miss act, it does miss. Time. I think I think it's David Fells' week. <laughs> Excuse me. Even then, uh, yeah. I'm sure you can find it probably better. He was my bargain bin think. man. If yeah, okay. have to That's do good. it, you have to do it. And yeah. Texas defense poo like we talk or sorry, the G- it's probably Jackson cheap in DFS, so you could bad. probably throw that yeah. in there, maybe. I hope for a touchdown. I'm doing you one I'll better. Play. You got yeah. pretty yet. much everyone. Yep. There's oh. oh yep. Well Harry just hurry up about it, please. So Randall Cobb's got an eighteen targets <laughs> on the year, thirteen catches. Brandon Cooks has twenty one targets on the year, ten catches. Kenny Stills has 13 targets, nice. seven catches. And then David Johnson actually has 14 targets, nine catches. You never said Will Fuller, pal. We, are, we know. Yeah, we knew guy. he was we, the guy. We know he's the guy. <laughs> okay. But it seems like uh, Cooks gets the targets, but he's not catching the ball. But Randall Cobb, David Johnson, and uh, Kenny Stills seem to all get like the same amount of targets. Yeah, yep. Around the same. Yeah. Let's jump to the next game, guys. Las Vegas Raiders at the Chiefs. Derek Carr, you're not nope. starting him this week, right? No. Nope. Chiefs defense looks decent. Yeah, they do. I want to say that he's a step yes, up from Jared do. Stidham and Brian Hoyer. So he might stand a, he might stand a, a little bit better of a chance. Yeah, that's for sure. It's not, it's not confidence at all. Yeah. <laughs> you still... Do you have confidence in Josh Jacobs this week? Uh, giving you a I don't know, back man. performance or no? I'm losing, I'm losing faith. I'm losing faith. What do you mean Just you don't know? He's your guy. It looks like without this offense having Darren Waller involved in it, he's not any good. <laughs> they just can't, like, get him any room to run. The offensive line has, has been underperforming, to say the least. Yeah, they are. Well, they're banged up, too. But it's been un- underwhelming for the most part. You'd like to see that he can find the end zone twice in a week like he did the first week. Yep. You know who else is banged up is the, the Raiders receivers. Henry Ruggs is battling an injury. He practiced today, which is a good sign. So hopefully he gets yeah. back out there. But Hunter Renfro yeah. had a decent week last week, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and then Brian Edwards is out this week, and they still got I mean, Nelson Aguilar and Jay To, to add on but... to pick up some nice thing, he is being a little bit more involved in the passing game this year. He's got 17 targets through four weeks, 13 catches. So it brings your floor up a little more. Yeah, he. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. You guys, I've said it on the podcast. You know how you guys both know how I feel about Josh Jacobs. I thought he'd be rushing the ball better. Guess the not. offensive line was great. Maybe the best in football, man, but they've had injuries, and that makes a difference. But nope. Darren Waller, Dude, top five tight end ever. I've week. seen his targets. It's just insane. Weird. I think he has 40 targets through four games. Yep, 40 targets, 29 catches. So 72.5 catch rate. It's not great, but he's getting volume. Sheesh. Then jump it over to the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, obviously, Every time. pretty much skip over him, start him. Ceh, you like this matchup, Mike? I think he finds the song. Yeah, I think he gets the touches, so I, I think you start him every week. Big, so I yeah. just go with him. Roll with what he gets. Okay. Then the pass catchers in this offense. Who are you starting besides Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, this week? One of them's gonna be okay. You're starting Sammy. He doesn't have that uh, Stefan Gilmore matchup, even though yeah, he he had it last week and he still had what one catch. <laughs> so he'll probably make a play or two, and then yeah, Sammy also but fumbled, they're gonna trust too, him to have me. the ball. No, I wouldn't feel safe starting any of them. I like Hardman as a flex play no DFS more start throw. Why not? Sure. Yep. 
Uh, next game, guys. Slobber knocker here. Arizona Hopefully Cardinals it's a get-right game for the Cardinals. Jets. Yes. Hopefully it's a get-right for everybody on their offense. Kyler Murray been struggling a little bit. I mean, he's still putting up a decent Yeah, he's been a good fantasy quarterback, not a good NFL numbers, quarterback. But... Yeah, struggling a bit, but uh, you're you have obviously to start 100% week. Yeah. starting him this week. He should. Yeah, he has week quarterback one uh, potential this week. Kenny Drake, that's the question. Yeah, though. do we trust him? It's kind of falling off. Like that. This week, yeah. <coughs> it's solid. What week. time is running out? Yeah, it's. If he's on your roster, you got to start him this week. You're starting now, a lot of Arizona players, I, know, I feel. I'm, You're st- they said not to worry about Kenyon Drake at the end of last week's game. He just got his, you know, the wind knocked out of him. But don't be surprised if he does, you know, just pop up with an injury and doesn't play a little bit of this game. I, I just don't see him. Like, I've heard Ike say it. I don't see him as an every down back. Yeah. Yeah, well, pick up Chase Edmonds if he's, like, not. Really? I mean, yeah, he had, he had two great matchups against the Lions and the Panthers. I mean, but Drake is still getting – Which is great volume. I love that volume. It's just he, – that's, that's an issue. He's, yeah. That's the issue about Chase Edmonds. But at some point, they the coach is going to get fed up with his in, ineffectiveness and will go Chase Edmonds, so it would be nice to have him as like a stash on your bench. Yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you there. Let's move on to the wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins. He gets targets. Startable. Hopefully he get – Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't even think you got to think about that. He's startable. Is Christian Kirk startable yet or no? Probably not, right? No. It's, it's between if you have to, this is the week to well. definitely use him, though. I, I'm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. It's Kirk over Isabella for sure. Yeah, it's Kirk too if uh, – yeah. Isabella – it, it, just well, like, it just seems like it just seems like Christian Kirk was yeah. injured at any given it's moment, Kirk. at any given time. <laughs> Let's just drop skip. Larry Fitzgerald. Yep. And then let's skip over the tight end position. And then the Jets, we could pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Joe Flacco. <laughs> this Don't like it. No. You can maybe no, start missing Crowder, guys, but Le'Veon Bell may I, play this weekend. From what maybe. I saw, I oh, haven't even no. seen them take him off IR Not yet, yet, so I don't think he's playing this game. But he was trending towards playing. Mm. Okay. Even if he somehow gets to play this week, I still wouldn't do it. Just yeah, it's gonna be the Frank Gore show. Oh, no, No, it's gonna be the Jameson Crowder show. Yep. I and no, I will say this: Joe Flacco does. Joe Flacco does like to target the tight ends. I don't understand. This might. This, but he does. But Adam Gase does not. So he might. Another good fact. No, Fair they're going to have Chris Herndon blocking would, like they have. You would think Adam Gase would be smart enough yep. to tailor the offense. That's that offense. Flacco, considering his jobs on the line. Nope. <laughs> no, fire him yes, after this week. Game. Jump to the next game. I hope they just get smashed. Philadelphia Eagles at Pittsburgh Steelers. Battle of Pennsylvania, gentlemen. I hate this matchup for Carson Wentz, and Ike, we have to start him. Yep. Unless That's fun. Unless we're starting Kyle time. Allen in that league. I don't want to. Oh, disgusting. Guys, if you can uh, – he it, okay. Let me ask you this. Well, you just said it, Laplace. If if He's, you got better options drop it, drop out there, him, right? yeah. he he <laughs> he has turned. You do his, have better options. He out has there. turned into a. There's quarterback just too much injuries, matchup, man. Like Deshaun matchup, Jackson's right? out. I mean, I know Alshon Jeffrey. He's trending towards playing. He's out. No, no Rager. He's on. No IR. Rager. Rager. No offensive Gutter. lineman. No guy. No yep. Lineman. It's really just Zach Gertz out there. The only player I want to, st- I want to start Miles Sanders, That's Zach Gertz in this offense this week. That's about it. I agree. And, and I'm not even super comfy about Miles Sanders, but he and, should see a decent he, amount. He might, of he might have that Montgomery stat line of seven catches for thirty out. yards. Right. This game might be kind of an ugly game, guys. In all honesty, it could be low scoring for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So are you stay? Are you okay starting Big Ben? Laplan, I know you roster him in our 
Uh, yeah, he's uh, Are you he's starting actually, Ben this week? <laughs> they haven't even needed to throw at the ball in some of these games, and he just continues to chuck it. So, I mean, they want to, they're trying to get him in rhythm, I think, again, after being out that full year last year. He can't move. It is. And this it is. defensive line is really good. And the offensive line. Fletcher's going to be in his rated. face. I don't know. I would be. I would be. I uh, hesitant. That James one's the Donner. one I'm worried about. Like you said, you I, about that, him? that defensive line is good. They're more of a rush. These guys have a tough defensive, time. Like powerhouse, not a. Just wait till Fletcher gets to Big Ben two or three times. And then, who are the wide receivers that you want to start in this offense? Obviously, I think you're starting Juju, right? And then is, yeah. um, you're probably not starting James Washington. And is De- what is it sounding like for Deontay Johnson? Is he? He's gonna play. Week? I'm pretty sure he's playing. And if he is, I would I, put put him in your lineup. I guess. Yeah, flex. Yeah, even though he target. missed, he was you know, part of the last game. game. He still yeah. leads the team in targets. That's wild. Over yeah. Juju. That's crazy. Eric Ebron. He made the tight end streaming article this week. If you have to, I like it. Philadelphia's linebackers yeah. are not not good, so he should be able to. If, you, if you're desperate, in the middle of the field, I'd like to think. Yep. Now let's jump to the next game: Rams at the Washington Football Team. Jared Goff. I like this matchup, guys. Uh, hold on, let me let me pump the brakes a little bit. I think the matchup is okay if the offensive line can withstand Washington's front seven. Do you guys agree? Yeah, he could you... be under a lot of pressure. But if yeah. he, he I... gets the ball out of yeah, his hand the, quickly. The game last fine. week Cooper against Cup the Giants, might have a good the Giants day. Uh, blitzed Goff a lot, and I think they found the the kind of key to slow down this Rams offense because when you blitz Jared Goff, his decision-making definitely goes down. Yes. Well, their offensive line's not good. No, it isn't. Like it was, you know what I mean? And then, uh, guys, the running back, the RBBC in I'd Los get- Angeles is not good, and Cam Akers is back. You know, Daryl Henderson blew up the one week. Malcolm Brown blew up a week one. Then Malcolm Brown gets, the ca- gets most of the Dark work out. last week. Like, what the hell are we supposed to do now? You Just get- not... I would roster. Them, Ask a random person to point at a card with their names on it. At this point, I mean, with Cam <laughs> Makers coming back in, I, mean, I think it's yeah. you got to give it a week to see if Cam Makers is going to take the job. Because if he doesn't, it's just going to be back to Terrell Henderson and Malcolm Brown. Yep. And then the three big pass catchers in this offense: Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Tyler I- Higby. <laughs> I'm a little scared He's of starting. Tyler Higby just because of this Gerald Everett taking targets away in the red zone because that was Higby's bread and butter. Yeah, but the way the tight end position is, I think Higby's probably for the most part a must start. I yeah, I just, yeah. I, you must yeah. start him. I'm just I'm not as confident as I was after he had that three touchdown performance. Okay, yeah, so you're just saying pump the brakes, relax on expectations. I get it. I get it. Uh, Rod Rivera did it, Ike. He did it. He switched it to his boy. He benched Dwayne Haskins, goes to Kyle Allen. Do you agree with it? Do you not agree? At some point, you got to try something I, new, considering like you're it. close to the division lead. I like it, because <laughs> it, sh- it shows he's got, you, you know, <laughs> on us and, you know, nuts. But at the same time, like, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. I didn't like, know that. Right, what what I'm upset yeah, about no is he made Alex Smith this, wow. the second string guy now because you basically you gave him the Mitch treatment. Dwayne Haskins probably had his morale is probably so far down. Like, yeah, we ain't oh, seeing yeah. him back. Yeah, he's done in Washington. I think. No, I understand that, but you bit. looked like it's not what we said guy, in though. the Ravens and uh, the Washington game. Like, uh, Dwayne Haskins had a good day. It's just the team didn't, and that was a good defense. <laughs> so I mean, he, he's yep. shown potential. That's all I guess. Are you guys? 
we've already we've already spent too much time on this. But uh, you, who else are you starting this off? Antonio you're Gibson. You're probably Antonio not, Gibson. You don't, Terry. Start him. Start him. Start him. Kyle Allen loves throwing to the running backs, and I can't I can't stress this enough. Just start him. Laplan, I, I knew you were gonna say that. Scary Terry. This like like Jalen Ramsey. I'm going no. If yeah, I, no, I, I'm sit sitting him. him. If you have a decent option, if you can't you, sit I'm him playing, just because you, of the fact what? he's getting what? too many targets and an offense that who who is he going to throw to? Dontrell Inman. What? I'm going to fight with you a little Gibson. bit here. I'll, I'll fight Against, you here I, for a minute. I would. Uh, would you rather have McLaurin or would you rather have who, who the Ravens playing Brown again this week? The Bengals. McLaurin. Oh, no way. Oh, Hollywood. No, 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 no. Hollywood. Why? Just because of the volume? And you don't know Terry what McLaurin had a good week like against Marlon Kyle Humphrey, Allen who is presumably the best quarterback in the, in the league, as you guys have said. No. But apparently Marlon Humphrey's lining up in the slot, so I don't know... I, you're you're kind of the numbers guy. You'd have to see how much um, they play. I'm just saying, if he could get ten Terry receptions, slot, on I'm not sure. Marlon, he got ten receptions on. Whoa. Oh no, I thought you were saying this week. I'm like, geez, you're. Really but I don't don't say that he got ten receptions on Marlon Humphrey. I mean, sure if if, if not, he Marlon. still got it on a very good pass defense of the Ravens. Would you agree? Okay. Yeah, I'm just they had to you throw a lot. You're gonna get. Yes, and I, I, I was his guy. I'm gonna say me. So I don't think Kyle Allen's gonna lock on to him like he he might lock. I on to I, guys I like think Don Antonio Gibson's gonna Antonio have Gibson. a good week. Gibson. Yes, Antonio. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying lower, lower. No, just I okay, mean, guys. Five. Just uh, lower LaPlan, your expectations I'll give you on him. What he's gonna do? Go ahead. But with what he did against the Ravens, it's possible. But lower your expectations. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Well, what, if you love, uh, yeah. Do you love? Do you love Logan Thomas this week? Cause no, you're the season? one that said you loved him before. <laughs> Why don't you argue for him? Right. I don't. Like Good it. talk. Miami Dolphins at San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> Fitz Magic guys. San Francisco's defense banged up. No, uh, I don't like nope. it. You guys like nope, it or no? Nope. nope. I mean, honestly, like just probably Parker if he's if he's playing because they don't have Richard Sherman. I honestly would not be starting well, Mike Kosicki right now. Their he linebackers not are doing the great. fucking strength he's of this the defense. And they, can, they can stop the tight end any given week. That's they true. They stop the running backs normally. So, I mean, if there's one place they can attack him, it's probably a wide receiver. I guys – Devonte Parker, I'm gonna. I've been tossing this word around lately, and I'm gonna, or this phrase around lately, and I'm gonna say it again. Since he's able to beat up on top tier cornerbacks, he might be matchup proof with Fitzpatrick. He likes to lock on to Devonte yep, Parker. Doing that now. Laplante, can you pull up his targets for me, please? I do. You agree with me, or I mean, you, are you not a fan? It's inconsistent. Like I'm, uh... through the first. Two weeks, he got 12 targets total. Week three, he gets five targets. And then last week, he got 12. Yeah, I think week three, he's a little banged up with his hamstring. Is, I think, why he was struggling. Yeah, that. he's near the top in, like, routes, run, targets, all that stuff. Well, so he's going to get his share of all that. So I'd be starting him. So, I mean. I just think he's in every. I mean, I. Our, uh, I think it's just like he knows. Like when you say top tier cornerbacks, he plays stuff on Gilmore so much. I feel like he just knows Gilmore's tendencies, and, and, take advantage, and he can take advantage of them. Yeah, he gets. But I want to see him bit. like against he, the Jalen Ramsey type, the Marlon Humphrey type, because yeah. I feel like he hasn't had many of those matchups. But yes, luckily. Well, luckily <laughs> he. He doesn't have to see one of those matchups this week. Like and, him and Richard and Sherman, were a good smoke battle, who's ever unfortunately Sherman's out, so Devontae might eat. G- 
guys uh, jump into the 49ers. I heard he's starting, Jimmy yeah. G, he might be back, right, from what we're hearing? Yeah, he's I still back. think they're going to be run heavy, though, just because they want to ease him in. Back. For sure. Oh, they're always run heavy. Raheem Moser, game time decision. Jarek McKinnon, Jeff Wilson. If Moser doesn't play, if he plays, just throw him in your flex RB2. Yeah, like where he drafted just him. lower expectations because right? he's coming off an injury. They're still going to get McKinnon involved. McKinnon. Who are you starting between McKinnon and McKinnon. Wilson if Moser doesn't play? McKinnon. Okay. Debo came back last week from injury. Kendrick Bourne, Brandon Ayuk, the pass catchers. Who you like the best out of hey. that? Well, sorry, I'll throw in George I've Kittle been too. talking about Brandon Ayuk for a couple weeks, saying he's going to explode, and he just keeps doing weird runs and stuff like that and getting touchdowns. So, I mean, <laughs> if you guys him, have a roster spot like open for it, might take me last year. And until Debo Samuel's they, like fully healthy. Until. Agreed. Uh, that's true. They drafted him for a reason. Yeah. LaPlan, I think that's what you're saying, and they they want to use – they have a it, um, game plan set And if up it isn't him, it's getting, George. Yeah, he's got some Kittle. He's explosive with the ball. Oh, God. He's awesome. He's awesome. We could just jump to the next <laughs> game. That dude's a beast. You can't tackle that man, guys. He is absolutely uh, insane. Indianapolis Colts at Cleveland Browns. Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Streamable. I mean, Cleveland has given up some points to opposing quarterbacks. I mean, mm, if you want, yeah, right, but I'm still scared. And if he can't, Miles Garrett's going to be breathing down his neck all game. Actually, yeah, I kind of want to. Thinking about it now, I think it's going to be a slower yeah, pace game. It's going to be low scoring, a lot of running. Browns the ball. defense is average. Yeah, Colts both teams like to grind it out. It'll on probably the be one of those low scoring, grinded out games. Sure, sure. Um, Jonathan Taylor, can he finally break out this week? Is it going to happen? Like, is he going to not this week? Up? We're waiting. He might for find it. the end zone, but he's been inefficient with his runs. I think we're as a podcast, we've been right so far because we weren't a pro Jonathan Taylor podcast coming in, Agreed. obviously because of the Marlon yeah. Mack. But then when Got he the shot. Marlon Mack went down, we kind of were like, okay, now Taylor, he's going to have. Yeah, but he's disappointed. I thought it'd be better. Like, think, come on, man. Yeah, I mean he's been okay, but come on. I think it might be everyone. Part, everyone was drafted. I think him it might be part round. of game calling too. Like return. Value, they know that dog. Jonathan Taylor was used a lot in college, and they might try and be like holding his workload back because they might be thinking of a playoff run. It wouldn't surprise me. Wide receivers. We already talked about T. Well, does I, I Ike? Do you want to say anything about Naheem Hines or no? Uh, I would leave him on your bench for now. Don't drop him yet, though. Okay. okay. Nope. T.Y. Hilton, we already talked about him earlier. Don't need to mention him again. Zach Pascal, Guys, all the, the pass catchers in this offense is kind of a shit show. Especially I, now <laughs> the tight end position. Mo Alley Cox was looking great. But he only ended up seeing one target, I believe, last week. It had one catch for the touchdown. Because Trey Burton's back from injury. I don't know why any and of the Jack pass catchers. Back. I honestly, no, I don't know what it don't. is, but I think Molly Cox Phil might just Phil. be that one, one catch touchdown type of dude for Phil, like Antonio Gates was. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's jump over to the Browns. Baker gets this number one. I do not defense. start. We've seen what they did yeah. to Nick Foles last it. week. They probably do the same thing to Baker, man. Huh? Yeah. But you are starting Kareem Hunt yep. with the injury news of Nick Chubb done six weeks. Hunt, as long as fuck, he could be the RB one. As long as his groin can hold season. out, because he has well, been at least for six weeks. Yeah. His groin. That's the only. Thing. I yeah. mean, Dearness yeah. Johnson kind of looked like he was going to come Did in any... and assume the Kareem Hunt role, and now Kareem Hunt's getting the Nick Chubb role. I was going to ask you. Did either of you guys run to? to I forgot to. No way. Your, your no leagues way. or no? <laughs> he only got that much because Kareem yeah, Hunt but, had mean, that groin way, injury, like LaPlante said. Uh, fuck. Yeah. We'll get a better. We'll get a better look I at think, it this week. 
Because this the better is going to be Kareem Hunt's first week as the full I think the, the better question load. is, is Jarvis I think they'll give him 20 carries. To OBJ? <laughs> <laughs> no. That sounds like something I, I think it's going to be OBJ to Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we don't like Baker. We like the running game. So do we like any of his pass catchers this week? Odell, like, if you want to go on a 30-second rant about I don't. Boy, if they're gonna, I don't. He finally if, blew the fuck up. If they're going to give him that volume it. with the He's rushing awesome. game, too, yeah. and the way he kind of just took it to the house, because I've seen that play, and he got pushed back like five yards behind the line of scrimmage and then took it to the house. So he's got at least wide receiver bolted. two value, you know, low-end wide receiver yeah. two, high-end wide receiver three value. Yeah. Yo, know, this finals is uh, wild right now. Yes, it is. <laughs> but in all honesty, I mean, you're starting Odell where you drafted him. I don't know if you're starting Jarvis this week. I, this matchup's not good. Like we said, it's going to be a slow pace. Yeah, game. I wouldn't start him. I'd be sh- I'd be shocked if Baker threw it more than twenty five. Under. Times. Like if I set that at the over under, would you guys under. go under or over? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we're all in agreements then. But uh, the plant. I'll let you. Uh, I'll kick All right, it to give you. Me one second, because now I want to turn on that. Games. Little thing on Hooper, real quick. If Baker does throw a touchdown, I feel like it could be the hint this week. I don't know why. Just a little exactly thing I want to say. Feeling. You got that yeah. hunch. On to the next game: New York Giants at Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we get the turnover machine called Daniel Jones for the Giants. I mean. This is probably the best week to start him against this porous Dallas Cowboys team. Would you guys start him this week, maybe as a streamer? Yes. If you have da- if you drafted Daniel Jones, which some people did, <laughs> people thought he was going to be good. Hey, Matthew Berry, this summer. is your shot for Daniel Jones to be Even good. Even though we, you can see how terrible Daniel Jones' the start of his season was going to be against the defense he was going to play. That's yeah, what doesn't make any sense. But this matchup is finally prime for him. I think he'll do okay. He'll probably still turn the ball over a yep. few times because that's what he does. I'm going to pause this real quick. But I've just seen LeBron have 40 points, man. Week. 15 to 21. You take that last shot the way you were Come shooting. Come on. All right. G- going on. On to the running backs for this uh, Giants team. Devontae Freeman, he looked pretty decent, you know, taking the spot for Saquon Barkley. Do we want to start him as a flex option maybe? Or are we avoiding him in this prime matchup? <laughs> I'm avoiding the the backfield until Saquon's back next season. Yeah, I'd probably start with Dylan there. I'd pick up Devontae Freeman, and if he just somehow – Start uh, he's it. he's yeah. a big filler, I guess. If you're, mi- he's if you're only going to be good Aaron in good Jones, matchups. Yeah. You're missing. So we're going to move on to wide Jones, receivers. I guess, uh, this week. With Sterling Shepard on IR, we got yeah. Golden Tate leading the crowd with uh, Darius Slayton. Actually, he's kind of been more of the number one receiver in this offense with the chemistry he has with Daniel Jones. Hopefully I think Darius, Darius Slayton would be a good wide receiver Hopefully three. Maybe Golden blow, Tate's a decent like flex, but this season. is the best week yeah. for it. Ike, any thoughts? Okay. Even yeah. against the Cowboys? I don't really like any of them. Do you think maybe it'll be a person like Damian Ratley? <laughs> to be honest, I am like literally probably the biggest Daniel Jones hater, and I don't think he's any good. So this could honestly, this could probably be the one game where you, Dallas Cowboys right. defense this could looks be a good. good. This could be a get right game for their defense. Uh, that. We'll move okay. on to the it's fair you know, enough. tight end position. Then. The very inconsistent Evan Ingram. Uh, you don't have to start him anymore every week. You don't. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even be starting him this week. What makes you say that? Just give me, you know, no, one he's not a must start anymore. He's not consistent. You kind of hit the nail on the head, man. And he hasn't. He's not consistent. Yeah, but no, even you're not when wrong. He has big weeks. They're not like, big. Like I said, he's inconsistent. Big. Week one, you know seven I mean? targets. He's week just... two, eight. Week three, five, and then ten this past week. But he's only fifty six point seven. I was just about to say it's not very good. What's it, could, his catch it could be percentage? a combination of him and Daniel Jones. Yeah. No, that's because I... Daniel Jones is terrible. Yeah, but. Uh... Ingram drops passes too. Guys. I just, I, this I, this I, would be the best I, week to play him. For me. I'm I gonna say that, but I I wouldn't be I don't thrilled to play him. 
I'll tell you who even I even Michael Gallup with how inconsistent he's every been? single person on the Cowboys offense. I know, I know. If it if you have Ike, you have him in a few leagues. If you have Michael I, I, Gallup, I'm you're actually probably not, starting him, right? I'm not. This week in this matchup. Ooh. Ooh. Who are you Jerry starting Judy. over? Who are you starting over? I get Yeah, we'll put that in the side pocket because they got a tough matchup. Okay, let's get to Patriots. Jerry Judy. Just let's put that yeah. My uh, yep. good thing for Michael Gallup though is he runs the most routes of all the Cowboys, but he's targeted the least amount and it's by a lot. And he's like lower than wide receiver threes and fours like Devin Duvernay. So I mean, yeah, he's, his he's target a, share is horrendous right now. It kind of has that. It's like, really hard to remember start. Remember a couple him. years yeah, ago, when really Tyreek Hill was just boom or bust. It's kind of like Michael Gallup right now a little bit. <laughs> More. That and just worse. Because sure. one week he'll get you twenty eight, and then I, last week it's like two because he because he's big play. It's like it's vertical or nothing. I think this week will be the week that Zeke eats. He'll be I my prediction he'll be RB one this week. The R B one because the I think the Cowboys should be up at least two touchdowns. Yeah, and the only the reason game, I so feel Elliot won't be Zeke, the R B one is maybe right Tony Pol- Tony Pollard vulturing a touchdown. But that's the only only way I see that. Uh so we should probably move on to our next game then. Minnesota Vikings at the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, I mean, we said everyone's starting on this offense. You forgot my boy Dalton Schultz, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, on to the be Vikings out. versus Seahawks. Roster, Kirk Cousins, uh, he said earlier in the podcast, the Seahawks are second in the league allowing uh, fantasy points to quarterbacks. Is Kirk a decent streamer this week? You, you, you say that with no confidence. I mean, I don't <laughs> yeah, blame you. Yeah. He is the man. That's because just but Dalvin just, Cook might be the man. The way Russ is playing and he the way this the Vikings defense is, they might have to throw the ball. It might be to Dalvin Cook, but he really hasn't got much as as much receiving work as last year. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, and uh, and Justin. Jefferson I think Justin kind of Jefferson's a flex out, play this week. So. Yeah, obviously, Kirk, you're starting Kirk, Adam He Fielder. might have a might have a decent week. Yeah, you're starting Delvin Cook. Two you can, two straight yeah, games of 100 Justin yards. Yeah, I mean, cool that? No. Yeah. I mean, they somehow managed to get a you're touchdown. You're not starting week, tight end, though. You never, you're like, not. it's too inconsistent. Just stay away. So, we're going to move on to the quarterback, Red Hot, Russell Wilson. Just lighting up the league right now. Uh, he, he, he had a Russman. little bit of a down week last week, but he's still, you know. Russman MVP. He, I never said bust, but I, I did say it was a possible trap game. <laughs> Russell Wilson bust weed. The, the actual surprise of this <laughs> offense, though. All right, move on. <laughs> it's still his least amount. Yeah, the dog gave me 350. Moving on. <laughs> yes. Obviously. Anyways, you're starting Russell because like he's the MVP. But, but. But we're we're it's a big surprise to us. Uh, yeah, he wasn't expected to play last week, the and then all of a sudden, you know, it's Carlos Hyde that appeared that he wasn't playing, and Chris Carson, <laughs> you know, went in and scored another what two touchdowns? Does as usual. You think thing. he's a running back? Uh, yeah, he, two cool with guy. upside or a running back? Uh, tough guy. Fair enough. He could be out at running back one, man. I didn't give him a week. The yeah. offense is just so high powered. It is. And he he's involved in the passing game. And they the real star of the offense is, awesome. is the two wide receivers, though. <laughs> with with this Vikings yeah. defense I mean, being kind of bad, and it has a possible last, shootout, you know, game written on it. I think even David Moore might be a solid dart throw in DFS or something. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I agree. Yeah, and Greg that's a decent streamer this week. Sure. This week, guys, why not? Sure. Right against this Vikings. Defense. Eric Kendricks might so, be out, so why not? Well, you, if you let me talk, cool. We'll play <laughs> jump into Monday night. Football. So move, <laughs> moving on to Monday night football doubleheader because we had some COVID scares. Go ahead, the host, weekend. 
Um, I think. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Can you just. The Tennessee Titans are just so stupid for holding their little private workout thing. So if they end up I just having feel the bad for the, the bills, for the, I wouldn't yeah, feel Yeah, the fantasy owners. I feel bad for no, nah, I don't care. Teams, man. Well, what about the players who? What's fucked up is I heard if since this happened to the Titans, if this game gets canceled. None of the bills get paid either. Yeah, they don't yeah get that's a little checks. messed up. Yeah, Isn't even, that messed even up? more of an incentive to go through all these protocols and even just hammer down on the Titans yeah. so they know what's up. Whether how you feel about the whole situation with the COVID stuff, just do yeah, what you're supposed to do at your job. Don't, you know what I mean? Just annoying that they ridiculous. would hold but, private workouts you know, like that and just that's enough talk risk about even that. more. Let's move on to the actual game. Uh, Denver Broncos at New England Patriots. Just so everybody knows, it's a 5 p.m. Eastern start, so that's a, that's going to be a weird one for everyone on the West Coast. It's going to be a 2 o'clock game for them. <laughs> But uh, Drew Locke's questionable. Uh, I think it's a game time decision. Uh, are we? We're staying away from Brett Ripon this week against a good. You know, Bill Belichick really likes to just kill backup quarterbacks, so we're gonna, we're gonna stay away from him. But Melvin Gordon <laughs> uh, with Philip Lindsay back in the lineup is Melvin. Do you guys see this being uh, running back by committee, or you think Melvin Gordon gets the majority of the touches? Ike. 65-35. Probably around there, 70-30. I think Melvin Gordon will still see more because Lindsay's just there getting was, back into Vic Fangio said that Phil Lindsay was that. actually ready last week, but he didn't want to just throw him into the lineup because of the short week against the Jets. So I I think Philip Lindsay's healthy. It's just this is going to be a tough matchup, and, and Melvin Gordon has proven to be good. So it's, I agree. It's probably going to be like a 60-40 split. Ike, are you starting Jerry Judy? Well, you already said you're starting Jerry Judy, but can you explain to me? Uh, he has why? seen five plus targets every game. The Patriots are at Patriots are really good at defending the pass, but they're without Gilmore and they're susceptible in the slot, and that's where Judy plays almost all the time. I don't know. I like him more. I think he's more. I think he can be more consistent than Michael Gallup, obviously, which is weird to say because Gallup's I'd in a better offense. Ike, but without Gilmore, I think they are a little bit more susceptible to okay. a big play, which Jerry Judy's capable of. For some it's reason, I just Emmer, think Tim he's going to see a lot of targets this game. I don't know week. why. I don't think Jake. As you said, I don't think no, Jake Butt's going to be yeah, any no part of this offense besides block. Week, so, targets got to go. Somewhere. So it's probably. Gonna be, <laughs> I mean, if you're starting, you're you're not confident whatsoever. But you're starting Tim Patrick in the flex, maybe, if you're desperate. Yeah. So all right, sure, we'll I move on to uh, deep the New England Patriots, yeah. where Cam Newton, he might play if he doesn't show any more positive tests. So, but that, yeah, don't count on it. You're you're probably going to get Jared instead of starting. Uh, but don't be surprised if Cam's a last minute addition. If he shows, he's been trending up. He's been asy- asymptomatic. But uh, the surprise to this offense last week ac- activated from IR, Damian Harris seeing seventeen carry, seventeen carries for a hundred yards. You think he's a good matchup against this uh, Denver man. Broncos run defense? Yeah, absolutely. I think show, um, the show guy me we're probably going to be safest with is James before White just because he gets the receiving there. game. Yeah, it's, there's still the Belichick back. But uh, we'll Adam move on to the wide receivers then. Julian wild, Edelman, you know. he's questionable, but he, yeah, he's a tough guy. I see him playing. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> but uh, the the surprise shoot up in this offense a little bit, and, uh, it'll be to right. me at least, is Nikhil Harry. He sees a decent amount of red zone targets. He just hasn't been able to be efficient with those targets. You think he's a good flex play in this matchup? Or are you, are you guys targeting more like a guy like Demir Bird who has that big play potential? 
Neither. I got to see more still. Okay. And more we're probably going to just skip over the tight ends because no one even knows who Ryan Izzo and Devin Asiasi is. And, so, yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. next game, Los Angeles Chargers at New cool. Orleans Saints. 8 p.m. Eastern time. Just so everybody knows, there's weird time, you know, switches with this whole COVID thing. There's final news that Justin Herbert is going to be the starter for the foreseeable the foreseeable future. But with news of Austin Thank Eckler you, today Lynn. finally going to IR, helping fantasy managers move, you know, him to the IR spot for those who have it. Joshua Kelly is now going to see the workload with Justin Jackson kind of, you know, being the second back in this offense. Do you guys like this matchup against the Saints? Not necessarily. Uh, go ahead. I, I'll let you go. Joshua first. Kelly isn't the most efficient running back as of right now. Justin Jackson hasn't really proven much, so I would honestly, I'd probably stay away. Josh Kelly's on a short leash, I think, guys. Fumbled in back to back games. I think Justin Jackson is yep. the better pass catcher out of the what? two. So I think he's going to be a little more involved than people like to like to admit. So Josh Kelly, like I said, you're, I want to wait to see what Josh Kelly is going to do. You might have to start him this week because of the with running back. This being the first the injuries, week, Austin Eckler being out. I but think I wouldn't Anthony be Lins, super comfortable. Like he loves to use two running backs, and he's going to be kind of curious to see how he wants to use these guys. So I, w- I would I would agree and wait a week, see how this kind of plays out. Mm-hmm. Next week we'll probably have a better answer. But uh, with Herbert starting, Keenan Allen finally becoming fantasy relevant with just all the targets he's getting. I mean, you guys happy that Herbert's starting? Now Keenan Allen could be, you know, good again? I wish they announced Herbert the yes, starter at the start. A ton of targets. The Keenan Allen would have been drafted significantly higher. Yeah. His value true. was so awesome in drafts. Where no. People get him. Unfortunately, I never got him because I didn't want him. But he was being yeah. drafted in the fifth, sixth yeah, round. Yeah, 49 targets. Like you betcha. Wide receiver one value I, in any week. Yeah. And awesome. probably they'll pass now, two weeks or whenever Herbert took now, over. Is what with Herbert loving to take shots down the field, Mike Williams is questionable. Yeah, if, oh, he's, uh, if he's you know playing in this game, do we want to play him maybe as a flex option? or? Yeah, per- yeah perhaps. He's dart throw say- like so is uh in DFS. Yeah, it's it is so pretty good looking ball, man. Seen and him I'm, catch a bomb. Last he does. Week. That kind of makes Herbert you know Hunter TV Henry ball. a little bit more valuable now that he's got someone competent throwing him the ball. So, yeah, with this kind of crap shoot of tight ends this year, I mean, yep, you're starting. Agreed. I'm hoping he's going to be. Is it every week yeah, tight ends here? So every we're going to move on to the quarterback for the Saints, Drew Brees. Uh, he looked a little better against the Lions. Yep. Uh, there's, there's rumors of Michael Thomas maybe being able to play this week, but I don't see it, guys. I, I think they're going to be safe with him. Uh, so, yeah. It would be a good idea. They have a buy. They see themselves so as a deep playoff team, so it'd be a smart decision to sit him this week. So probably close to hopefully you guys have planned otherwise, you know, and you got that under control. Alvin, Car- Alvin Kamara, the must start of the year, besides Russell Wilson, maybe. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I know this is a tough Chargers defense, but I still think Kamara probably gets another ten catches. Nope, but uh, he's awesome. We don't need you to guys. Go in another I mean, I know we're scared about Latavius Murray, but Kamara. I think he's in this good offense with Sean Payton. I think he's a decent flex value. I see him kind of like a Kareem Hunt a little bit in this offense. I like him. It's it depends the match. I think every right? week he's gonna get his usual ten to fifteen carries. So I mean, yeah, like Michael Plant said, he he he's kind of a little touchdown him, dependent. Yeah. Even, but he's not getting the most touches in the red zone between the two running backs. So it's I don't I don't know. He's not necessarily starting. So worthy. we're gonna move on to the wide receivers then. Uh, Manuel Sanders showed a little bit more life in this offense, uh, but. The big surprise was Traquan Smith catching two touchdowns. I mean, are you guys confident in either of these guys? No more than probably flex. 
you're not confident, but I guess you can start him. Right? Wide receiver so, three or flex. Yeah. Jared Cook, tight end for this offense. He's questionable. Uh, yeah. With Michael yep. Thomas being out, if Jared Cook plays, I think he's a decent option. Do you guys agree? But if but if not, we're sticking away because sure. we don't really trust Adam Troutman. <laughs> yep. So we're going to move on Come to the man. special of this week because of COVID. We got the Tuesday Night Football COVID-19 special, <laughs> Buffalo Bills at Tennessee Titans. As long as there's no more positive tests against Tennessee Titans, you know, we're going to have this game. It could get weird, guys. Um, with it being played on Tuesday, those scores that game will be at well, seven p.m. Eastern, just so everyone knows. Four week five uh, scores, just so everyone's we're aware. Gonna... Legit, monitor that Titans team though, because if there's yeah. any more tests, I would you, take everybody from this game off. That, uh... <laughs> and don't but do it till it's too moving late. Moving on either. to the one of the other three, like red, really red hot quarterbacks in the league, Josh Allen. Surprise red hot quarterback of the year. Uh, we said he was matchup proof last week. Uh, I know Ike didn't like that. Ike, you leaning more towards us now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I will say this. He did oh, no, it'll off be hard Allen. in last week's game, and he might be Love a little. Sh- he did, but I, I would just. But he gets back. He gets back up again. I would temper X. Ex- da dun dun. Chumbawamba. Michael Plant didn't know that. that. I'm on. saying that thing, by the way. <laughs> no, of course he didn't. But I would just temper yeah. expectations on Josh Allen. I don't feel fine. like. That. Well, no, 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 no. Just this week. I I just feel like they're not going to use him as much in the rushing game with him being shaken up. Whoa. That's all. That's another thing. I mean, like Have they had any practice. <sighs> Bill's That's so fucked up for the Titans. I don't care. Why not? Screw the Titans. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. They're idiots. Uh, I, to be honest, I'd rather have, have them fourth the Titans. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Zach Moss is questionable again. Uh, you guys we'll play see him playing this week? Any back. news on that? I haven't seen, but uh, I do you agree with me? Uh, yeah, Moss I've been saying it. I've seen the Titans yeah, be... running back for weeks now. <laughs> Uh, he, he seems to always be getting <laughs> the work in the pass game, and that's <laughs> always good because this seems to be a pass-heavy offense now. So, because of that, that's a good segue into you know the Weird. surprise wide receiver of the year, Stefan Diggs. I mean, he's he's probably got to be up there for one of the best values. Yeah, what's best values in a draft? Talk about uh, value pick. You guys think he can keep this up though? I mean, I know you guys said last week it was a sell high, but he he did it again. He As as long as Josh Allen is going, D- Diggs will. I don't think. Okay, uh, I don't think he'll be this good, but he should. Yeah, he's I, he'll float around. He's got thirty five targets through four games, uh, seventy four point three catch rate. I mean, it it's better than what people thought. Yeah, it's better than what people thought. Doing so his usual. Thing. We're gonna move on to uh, John Brown, who's questionable again. Uh, any news on if he's starting this week? I think he's just kind of like they they do this questionable thing so they can give like the veteran days. All right, and we're going to be starting him too because this Tennessee Titans pass defense ain't great. Yeah, he'll be okay. Yeah, if you're if you're desperate with these injuries, man, and you know and you didn't have Chris Godwin Beasley. or something, start Beasley too. Cole Beasley's definitely a decent option. Ike, would you agree? He caught. <laughs> he caught that touchdown. Got a absolutely, but uh, at best. these tight ends. I mean, with it being pass heavy, are yeah, these sure, guys sure. worth some starts? Dawson Knox, Tyler Croft. You don't know what one's gonna get the ball. It kind One of reminds, week it's it Knox, reminds, next week it's it Croft. Of the I'd Texas offense, yeah, I don't want some no You just don't know which one it's gonna no be. Touch. Not, not touchy. Right. You never know. It's like a <laughs> box of chocolates, man. You never know. Sick reference, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Is that how when comedy I tell works? Joke, I, I tell you, <laughs> show, moving I tell on to the quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. Hopefully, <laughs> if they play, Ryan Tannehill. I mean, this is a tough, uh, you know, defensive matchup with the Bills. Do you think he's worth starting? I can. Nah, no. I, I know no, you like no. Tannehill. Like, is he worth it? No. Stay away this week. He's, Even been, he's been a fantasy stud, right? Average like, to decent. He, he's good enough to get you by, I guess. If you didn't go quarterback early, but or uh, I'm gonna stop us there because that's super probably late. what we talk about on Tannehill. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was gonna say Henry, you're starting, but you're you're definitely yeah. tempering expectations because this is a tough ahead. Buffalo Bills defense, and I feel, I feel bad, bad for, for myself the too. Who drafted him early. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it. But I mean, the the no, I mean, the one positive thing is he's he getting the, the league volume. Too. Like he's so, over Josh. Chick. Just oh. I know volume this, volume there that. Is, the I know he's been like inefficient. Carry, yeah. man. He's not I, going anywhere. He's been <laughs> inefficient through four games, and I'm gonna have to attribute that to you know the offensive he's... line. They've... He hasn't even played four games, three games, because his team is stupid and doing private well, workouts. Just <laughs> but... no, you can't give him the loss. Give him the because... loss already. Right, no one move likes on, him. Move along. Why? Because you have Derrick Henry? I Josh Allen. <laughs> yeah, I don't I care about Josh Allen to play, my dude. <laughs> I care I care about what's right. Thank you. And the Derek, Titans are I not. Derrick Henry else right. has the most rushing Move attempts. On. Second. Him and Josh I don't Jacobs care what Derrick Henry has. Yeah, he probably has COVID. 83 and 82. Like, they're getting the volume. They're just being <laughs> inefficient, which means in good matchups, they're going to do better. So moving on to the wide receivers then, Maybe. AJ. How about that good matchup against the Jaguars? Passive aggressive. <laughs> Stop. AJ, I can say that all I want. You said I could last week. I, I tried, but you stopped me. All right, you can move along. Move AJ this Brown, on. <laughs> questionable. You're probably not starting him because he's got a tough yes, matchup with Tredavious uh, White if he does play, and he's probably not 100% healthy. <laughs> they all got COVID. You can't start any of these wide receivers. Hoping he That's finds the end zone. That's, That's why you can't start probably Tannehill. The only week. thing, the only You're hope starting you got. Johnny Smith. That's about it. <laughs> so I think that about wraps it up, don't you think? Yeah, for real. Ah <laughs> oh, man, the Titans bug. Yeah, that pretty much does it, guys. Great podcast. Uh, please remember to always like and subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. You can find us on Spotify. Uh, I'm not sure that we're, we're, getting there. We're, YouTube. we're on Apple Podcasts yet, but uh, yep, yeah, Spotify it is, yep. guys. Uh, or YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter at dclemens2222 and you can also find my tight end streaming article every week and the fantasy six pack website <laughs> you Go can ahead, follow me at guys. twitter at ike2121 every sunday i do the injury impact article you so you can check that out on fantasy six like pack underscore mike with two eyes i write the weekly trend article it comes out every monday no i think the worst one is definitely the, the worst tight end one. Streamer one it wasn't even yours you want to go, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Pray, pray to the gods. No more COVID. Peace. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football could have. Where the three best friends that fantasy football.